All right, Heather, go ahead and let's kick this off. Thanks for joining everyone. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. And hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. We're talking with Courtney Wilcox, project manager at Biofire Diagnostics. Courtney's going to tell us the story of how Elementum is playing a role in Biofire's ongoing supply chain transformation. Courtney is a certified PMP. She's been at Biofire for about three years. And before that, she served in the Peace Corps, deployed in Mali, West Africa. And no doubt, all of those experiences came to bear as she expertly led us through a proof of value exercise where BioFire was able to explore Elementum's enterprise service management platform and determine that not only did Elementum uh, meet the needs for inventory control better than JIRA, but also that Elementum should be part of BioFire's supply chain strategy going forward. I am your host, Heather McSherry. I have the privilege of leading the customer success team here at Elementum. Courtney, the floor is yours. All right, well, thank you for that introduction, Heather. Um, happy to be here. Uh, so you all know a little bit about me, um, and we're just really excited that the team at Elementum asked us to uh, do this webinar with you all. Um, we're very happy Elementum customers at BioFire. And so I'll just use the better part of the next hour telling you all a little bit about the journey that my department took recently, uh, switching from Jira to Elementum as our primary task tracking software. Um, so I'll just use this opportunity again to briefly tell you about my company and what we do uh, while we're on this slide. Um, so I work for a company based in Salt Lake called BioFire, and we are an in vitro diagnostics company. Um, people here in vitro, they think babies, which is actually not what we do here. Um, in vitro is just a science, is a very fancy scientific word that implies testing a human sample. Uh, we actually manufacture medical devices called test kits or panels. Um, and we also manufacture the instruments that run and analyze those tests. So I'm sure you all um, at this point in the pandemic have had to be tested for COVID at least once, maybe four or five, six times if you're like me. Um, and if you've been tested for COVID, there's a chance you got tested with a BioFire COVID panel. Um, so speaking to the challenges that we have faced as a department and as a company, um, we've been growing pretty quickly in terms of sales and physical space, um, but not necessarily headcount. And that's been intentional as we've shifted from manual production lines to custom machine automation. Um, we're making more product with fewer employees, which for departments like mine, I work in inventory control, uh, which is a department that I like to refer to as the um, being on the periphery of the supply chain. Um, there are a lot of moving parts with respect to our processes. And with higher rates of production and increased levels of inventory, um, we needed a solution to manage our increased workload and to give us some insight on how we could reallocate our human resources better so that we could meet the demand the demands of our supply chain. Um, so some of the metrics that we observed once we switched from Jira to Elementum can be seen at the bottom half of this slide. Um, when we were working in Jira, we didn't have a way to calculate the dollar value assigned to each ticket that came through. We would do the calculation manually by looking up the standard cost and then multiplying it by the quantity. Um, but there wasn't a field for that in JIRA and we couldn't just easily run a report against it. And so we were pretty surprised to find out that incidents that required our attention actually total about $80 million a year if adjusted out for the full year. And being the only company under BioMario, uh, so BioFire is a subsidiary of our French parent company, um, we're the only ones that have an, in, an inventory control department. And these are the kinds of reports that quantify the value of our work, uh, and they help us to justify our existence. As far as the resolution times, we have a unique process that generally requires multiple members of our department to participate in the closing of a ticket. Um, as a medical device company, we are under strict FDA regulation and all of our corrections, all of our work uh, subject to audit. Um, it has to be correct, which is why we require two sets of eyes. In JIRA, we would have to reassign the ticket to the, the approver, um, which isn't as simple as the Elementum feature of tasking, uh, which essentially, essentially allows multiple people to have assigned tasks under one incident without having any kind of reassignment. Um, with respect to the user adoption rate, our team was 
pretty excited about some of the new features that we didn't have in JIRA. Um, there was, of course, a learning curve, and we had to get uh, used to some things just being different, not necessarily better or worse. But we were expecting to onboard about nine or 10 people during the pilot. And by the end of the trial, uh, we had everyone on our team on board, plus a few more members from our materials management team. Uh, can you go to the next slide? OK. So kind of expanding um, on the challenges that we uh, faced as a department while we were working in um, JIRA. The biggest challenge with JIRA is the analytics. Um, the way we were using JIRA just simply wasn't what it was intended for. So JIRA is great for software projects, which typically use the agile approach. But for supply chain, we aren't concerned with sprints. Uh, we have immediate issues that need immediate solutions um, because oftentimes a single issue with supply chain can halt production. And any halt in production for a manufacturing company is not good for the bottom line. So our team is handling um, about 1,500 issues a month. And at the beginning of the pilot period, we were averaging about five days per issue from, from open to close. Um, and when we were using JIRA, in order to create the reports that we needed, we'd have to export reports from JIRA and then clean them up in Excel because, because we couldn't effectively aggregate the information we needed across multiple JIRA projects. Um, and we'd have to do that in Excel. So in Elementum, the filter option is a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to manage. Uh, you don't need SQL skills to create advanced reports. Uh, we don't have to export anything to filter it down. Uh, we also have no need to separate our departments, uh, sorry, excuse me, to separate our work single department into different projects like we did in JIRA um, because the save filters option allows us, um, allows each area of the department to see what they need to see, but also the ability to remove that filter when we need more information for reporting. So um, I know at the top here, we have a quote from uh, my director um, that was submitted to our information systems department when we were petitioning for the approval to get Elementum, to get the Elementum trial period. And uh, trying to fit a square peg into a round hole is one of the favorite expressions of inventory control to describe our efforts of doing something that just isn't designed to work that way. Um, and that's essentially what JIRA was to us. It wasn't a bad product. It just didn't really fulfill any of our needs. Hey, Courtney, before we go on, can you spend a little bit of time talking about the, the technologies involved, JIRA, Python, Tableau, Domo, Excel? Who on your did you have IT involved to help with the Python scripting or did you have that skill set on, on your team? No, we're a very technical team. So um, all of that is in-house, not so much by me, but by um, other people in our department are very technical. So they should be on IT teams. And so just because they had that skill set, you were able to you know, leverage Python, maybe in places where other teams don't have that skill set, Python wouldn't be an option. Um, other organizations right. may have gone to, to, uh, to include IT. Got it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Next slide is good. Okay. So continuing the theme of challenges and trying to tell the chronological story of how we ended up with Elementum, um, we knew that we needed to explore the market to see what other software packages are out there. And we knew that we needed something that was geared toward physical processes. Um, but the obstacle was, was getting our overseers to approve of us going with a vendor that hadn't been used before, uh, especially since our entire company um, uses JIRA and also SAP, which is our uh, ERP system, um, is what most other subsidiaries of BioMario use to track issues. So the software needs we identified before we discovered Elementum were, um, one, it, it should be geared towards supply chain issues. Um, two, uh, it should help us to reduce the amount of Python scripting we we're running to create the reports uh, we couldn't easily create in JIRA. And three, um, we needed to be able to collaborate with other supply chain departments. So a notable percentage of the issues that we uh, address are submitted to us by unlicensed users outside of inventory control. And the software needed to be able to handle ticket creation um, outside of the platform that we could rely on actually getting to us. Um, and I know that our uh, our director ran into um, an Elementum rep at a conference. Um, we got briefed on what the product could do for us um, versus the, you know, the limitations that we had in our 
previous system. And once we got uh, buy-in from our systems and our securities teams, um, we decided that we could go ahead and launch the 60-day pilot and give it a shot. So you got to be careful who you run into at those conferences. You never know who <laughs> no, I wish I got invited to them Maybe <laughs> next year. Next time, so. Courtney. So at this point, BioFire knew you had problems that you wanted to solve for. You thought Elementa might be a fit. You wanted to try us out in a 60-day trial. And for any kind of technology evaluation, um, you know, there's there's two, what I see as fundamental steps in, in starting out. You have to agree on the scope agree on what's gonna be in trial and what's gonna be out of the trial. And then to also define up front, what does success look like? How are we gonna know at the end of this trial if this is a fit or not? And how can we know in a way that's, that's unambiguous? Um, so to the matter of scope, there are a number of processes that you can digitize an Elementum that you can model an Elementum inside and outside of the supply chain. BioFire landed on these four inventory control processes here in the middle of this slide. So Courtney, can you tell us about these processes? What are they? What, what are they about? How do they work? Right. So just prior to the trial period um, commencing, uh, so the logistics items highlighted in blue, they, these are the issues that we deemed as really important to us as a department. Um, the trial period needed to assure us that these issues could be handled by Elementum um, because they're, they're a vast majority of what we deal with on a, on a daily basis. Um, because we are a tightly regulated industry, we operate an in-house uh, software system that captures far more detail than our ERP system actually can capture. Um, we have to know for every single test that comes off of a production line, what lot and sublot for each component of raw material was built with. We need to know dates of manufacture. We need to know dates of raw material expiration. Uh, none of this is captured by SAP. And, and for that reason, we operate out of two systems. And sometimes the levels of inventory between them can get skewed. So because we need to be accurate, we need to know when these systems are out of sync. And we need to know that Elementum's API services could create those tickets with a high severity um, immediately. The same need applied with tasks associated with our daily cycle counting. Um, we have over 20,000 active parts in our, in our database, and we needed to be able to track our problems, uh, our problem parts, uh, which we couldn't do easily in, in Jira. Uh, so we had to rely on Domo or Tableau, um, which only picked up issues that were reported in the count itself and not necessarily in our reconciliation process. Um, and so the point is that we, we work in a lot of systems and Elementum is the place um, that all of our information is gathered in process with, with, a, with a high degree of automation. Sorry, I think you're muted. Yeah, thank you. Can you speak to the reasons why you might experience like legitimate variances between one of your tools and, and the other? Like what what yeah. happens to cause the variant like in, in your past experience? Yeah, um, so there are there are quite a number of reasons. Some um, sometimes they could be software glitches where you, uh, you the user interface that we use, which is our in-house system, may not transmit the signal. There may be something that's down. Um, there could be somebody who's changing something in one system but not realizing they need to change it in another system. There's a lot of there's a lot of manual work and there's also just a lot of room for um, error to happen that would skew um, inventory values. And moving into the cycle counts process, how many how many products did you say that you're responsible for? Having 20,000, over 20,000. It could be more than that. I know we have a new product that's launching. And so um, I think the, the value of the number of parts we have on in our database is changing all the time. Um, but uh, we, we cycle count daily, actually, whereas most companies will do it biannually or annually. Um, we have a daily cycle count team. And can you give us an idea of how big that team is? Um, I would say there's at least 10, maybe 12. Mm -hmm. So 10 to 12 people cycle counting which is you know it adds up to be a pretty high cost just to keep our inventory straight hence the need for our department mm -hmm. and that directly ties back to the nature of a regular regular regulated industry is that right exactly yeah. yep all right thanks for that sure. so when it comes to running a pilot doing a trial whether it's a 30-day trial or a 90-day trial 
the implementation plan is, is basically the same in terms of, of the stuff that we're doing on a different time scale. So BioFire configured the element and platform, trained up their users that were gonna participate in the trial. And then we went live with that trial. And then from there, from the go live, we had weekly check-ins to see how is it going? What's happening? BioFire was using live operational data during this trial. So this wasn't a theoretical exercise. This was important that we kept a close eye on the data so that we could take action quickly when the, when the data told us that, that something needed to be done. At the conclusion of the pilot, we partnered to develop a business case um, to, um, to, to move forward. So Courtney, this started out as a 60 day trial, but we extended to a 90 day trial. Can you talk about what happened? Yeah, so needless to say, the execution of the um, pilot was not without flaws. Um, we originally introduced uh, Elementum to the team as something we were going to try for two months, maybe keep it, maybe not. Um, and that probably was not the best way to encourage people to participate. Um, so around the fifth or sixth week, it was more than halfway through the original timeline, um, we noticed very few tickets were being closed and even fewer had the detail um, added to it to make any kind of meaningful reports. And we realized that um, while we were requiring Elementum to be used, we allowed end users to continue working in JIRA. Um, and that's where they were doing all of their documentation because it was the system that they were familiar with and why do double the work. So I didn't feel like we were really giving Elementum a fair evaluation um, since we were barely using it. And that was uh, the point where we had to make the executive decision to cut off JIRA uh, until a decision had been made after the trial. Um, and we essentially forced our team to figure out the nuances of the new software. Um, I think once that happened and they started getting their feet wet, uh, they grew more comfortable and really started to prefer some of the element features, not to mention that more data flowed through our system once that happened. And that really highlighted the superiority of the analytics because we had more data to draw on. Um, the second issue is uh, we didn't quite anticipate um, was that uh, we started this pilot in the summer. So keep in mind, we are a French owned company. There is a heavy emphasis on not being in the office during the summer months, uh, combined with the long weekends for 4th of July and one of the state holidays that we have here in Utah. Um, it was just difficult to communicate to our team in, in mass uh, what exactly it was that we were doing here. Um, I personally was not involved with or didn't even know about the project until week three. I returned from vacation and I had this meeting on my calendar the day I got back for a project I was assigned to that I had never even heard of. So yeah, we were, we were that disorganized. Um, so thankfully, Elementum realized that we were in a state of organized or unorganized chaos, I should say. Um, and we got an additional month tacked on for a trial period, since I think it's fair to say that we essentially wasted the first month. Well, you know, all, all things for a reason, right? And you know, I think it's uh, important to know that when you when you offer um, trial users uh, another option that sometimes plays against you. So, so <laughs> it's hard. Um, make it easier by saying this is this is what we're going to do. Get everybody on the same page. And then to your point too, it's it's challenging to conduct trials during a heavy vacation season. So um, we were happy to extend uh, to allow you guys to to do the testing and the trialing that you needed to make a, a good decision for you. Um, so after the extension started, you guys became laser focused with Element and you said, we're going to stop using JIRA for the purposes of this pilot and really kick the tires. Uh, and then when you started using the system more, you had more data in the system to draw insights from and to draw conclusions from. And then that start, sort of was a tipping point that uh, allowed you to start to make um, really valuable um, conclusions about the data. So let's talk about um, starting with the end in mind, are critical success factors for the trial? Okay, uh, so uh, within project management, um, one of the most crucial stages of the planning process is determining what success is to you. Um, it's, it's starting with, with the end in mind. So what is the criteria used to determine if this project is successful? Um, I just talked about where we essentially failed in the planning process, uh, just getting this trial off the ground. Um, but we did do a pretty good job predetermining what factors were going, we were going to consider um, when it came time to make a decision. And uh, 
Um, these were requirements that can be objectively uh, de determined based on our needs assessment. Um, can Elementum make our job easier in essence? So at the end of the trial, um, the green points were a yes, this has been done. Um, and the yellow indicated that we were either still awaiting some enhancements that were in the process of development, um, signaling our continued relationship with Elementum, um, or that we had changed our approach to a solution we thought we needed, but ended up finding a better way to accomplish um, some automation with the guidance and more importantly, the cooperation from Elementum. So uh, just some highlights from this list here. Um, everything that we did in JIRA had to be doable in Elementum. That was the first requirement, which is why it's there. Um, we, we didn't want to have to cross into double system territory. We were trying to get away from that. Um, we also needed full vis visibility into um, you know, what our peers had on their plate and how many tasks came in per shift so we could allocate resources. When we switched to 24 seven manufacturing, um, we thought we needed two weekend workers to handle the volume of incidents. But after evaluating the data during the pilot, um, it made us realize that just one was just one worker was sufficient as um, most reported problems actually occur during heavier production times. Um, so under reporting then, uh, we, we originally thought that we didn't want to have any Python scripting running. Um, and that actually turned out to be difficult on the biofire end due to our securities team not wanting to grant access to SAP data um, to an outside vendor, especially since we were just in the in the trial period. Um, but now that we're under contract with Elementum, I think our information systems team is in the process of figuring out how to create a plugin for SAP. And perhaps that success factor will turn green in the coming months. Um, but since we had to fall back on a plan B for this point, um, we did figure out how we can extract data using Python and plug it into the available into the available fields, uh, which is an automation feature we did not develop while we were using Jira. Python is a, a secret weapon in the in the bio firehouse. I love it. Yeah, especially inventory control. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So um, as the production lines around us were switching from manual lines to automated machines. Um, we knew we needed to get with the times and invest in technology. Um, so we came to we came to Elementum interested in the APIs, but really it was the the analytics, I think, that sealed the deal for us. Um, and I think I've talked about the, anal the analytics proponent of Elementum a good deal so far in this presentation. Um, but over the next three slides, I'll just quickly highlight some of those reports we love and why they're important to inventory control. Um, so these two graphs are real data from our trial period. Um, one feature we love is the dollar value assignment as a department that's vested in identifying problems uh, before, before they become real issues. It's satisfying for us to attach a, um, a value to our work. So on, on the bottom, these were the number of incidents we logged weekly over the course of the trial period. Um, we started with essentially none and finished with more than 250 per week with the line, the yellow line denoting the uh, average time it took to close the ticket. So there is a learning curve with new software, like we said before. Um, this is a visual of how we kind of ramped up our use of the tool once it became became the only option for us. Um, our team became more comfortable with the software and uh, we were engaged with the features. Um, but we also formalized our process. So uh, the process for closing tickets. Um, so we were working uniformly across the team and we made our approval process more efficient through the use of tasks, um, which is not a JIRA feature. Awesome. So not only did the users become more familiar with the platform and that kind of, that that's a kind of a no brainer, right? Once you start using something uh, at day zero, you're gonna be better at using that at day 90, but you were also able to introduce, introduce process efficiencies specifically around approval that also led to this great um, time savings in terms of mean time to resolution of issues. Awesome. Right. Then. Okay. Um, so the chart with the red bars is also real data from our pilot period. Um, I think we made everyone who was um, in the office at the beginning of the period um, at least log in. Um, and then usership kind of declined up until we made the elementum only requirement uh, around that August 23rd mark. Um, any transaction we make that requires documentation requires an element of incident creation. And, and once that rule was implemented, we saw our uh, unique user tally increase. 
Um, so I also casually mentioned earlier that um, unlicensed users have the ability to ask for help and make requests that can be configured to um, create incidents via email without going directly through the platform. Um, that way we don't have to pay for a license for someone who may not be a regular user. And we want to know who is requesting our services and from what area within the supply chain uh, they're coming from, um, because the areas with the most issues may need the most attention uh, with respect to process improvements. Or the areas with the least amount of requesters may not know they can turn to us for help, and it could be an opportunity um, for us to reach out to them. So, so lastly, assuming all of these requesters are equal, um, we can recognize or celebrate the most frequent creators with this metric, uh, which may help to successfully sustain change as one of behavior is recognized. And Courtney, were you able to get this sort of information out of JIRA in some way, in some form? No, not that I know of. Um, no, I mean, I, I guess we could have used Python to do it, but it's not, it wasn't, a, it's not, it certainly wasn't a report that was within JIRA. Mm -hmm. So when you're able to see this report, um, I think leadership was like, oh, Right? It, was, it was kind of an eye-opening report to say, oh, these, this is where my, most of my uh, incidents or requests are coming from, and then you could tune your, your daily work to, to helping investigate those. Yeah, exactly. And we changed the name of Ian Inventoria, but I remember my director saying, oh, we need to give Ian Inventoria you know, props for doing his job. Right. And, and then, you know, to your point, when you look at, at requesters uh, eight, nine and 10 and you say, OK, well, these people aren't entering as many uh, requests for help as others. Sometimes that's going to be expected. Maybe PAP procurement, maybe that was expected that they wouldn't have as many issues or maybe it was an indicator that maybe Pat needed a, a little bit more love. Right, a little bit right. more training or a little bit more just attention. And so either way, having the data is a way to, um, to, to be in the know, right? Knowledge is power. And with this report, now you, you had a sense of, of who's doing what. Exactly. And, and I said that it's for all, you know, all of these um, requesters being equal. And in our, in our situation, they're not equal. We do work with some departments more than the other. So it's going to be expected that we'll get more uh, feedback or more requests from one department over the other. But that may not be the way it works for every company. Or for every process, right? Right. Okay, so this slide shows one of my favorite reports because I think it's the most meaningful when you combine the information. Um, and again, this is real data from our pilot, but due to um, biofire trade secrets, we did change the name to the locations of the parts to something a lot more fun than their chemical reagent names anyway. Um, so by, by location, the graph on the left shows the top location by incident dollar value and the graph on the right shows top location by volume of incidents occurring uh, there. So you may have noticed that um, Galactic City uh, has $6.7 million associated with that location, which is by far the highest amount, but it has the lowest number of incidents and um, at an average of $169,000 per incident, uh, whereas the next highest Camino has uh, a reported average of $1,100 per incident. Um, so we know that we probably need to pay attention and focus our efforts into what's going on uh, in Galactic City. Um, another, another interesting point looking at the charts by product is that the top products by cumulative value and top products by volume, uh, so the number of incidents that are reported with this product being the, the issue, um, they're completely different lists. And so we, we may be able to deduce from, from this chart side by side that we spend a lot of our time fixing issues related to Delta Starfighter parts when they really don't carry much weight in the grander scheme of things, which for us is value. And so, I, you know, I started my career as an analyst and this kind of stuff just makes me batty. I love it. So yeah, we're, we're all a bunch of data geeks here too, Courtney, you're in good company. So um, maybe, maybe we'll have to give out prizes or uh, at least fame. Uh, fame, if you uh, write in the, the question and answer section where these city names are from, or planet names, planet name city names, do you know what movie they're from? And do you know what products are being described in the left? <laughs> take a little right. poll. Yeah, take a little poll. If I could set up a poll, I would, but maybe just respond in the Q&A if you're interested, if you want to play along, and we'll uh, <laughs> later in the webinar. <laughs> and so one thing that um, we did do 
uh, or that Elementum has um, is, is just a database for all of our products that we could just load into that. We did not have that in Jira. We couldn't tag um, part numbers that way. We, again, would have to export them using um, Domo at the time. Now we use Tableau. Um, but we couldn't get this information from our task tracking software. It wasn't, it wasn't central. Mm -hmm. And now all of those 20,000 plus parts are right in Elementum to relate to issues as they come up, relate to locations as they come up, and now you've got these great charts to know what's going on. Right. Okay. Um, so when our pilot came to an end in September, we had to evaluate um, Elementum side by side with Jira uh, in collaboration with the critical success factors that I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and we did, a, we did a round table with the department at the end of the trial where everyone who was a frequent end user um, got to say what they liked better about Elementum and what they liked better about Jira uh, and what just what their final recommendation was for whether we stay or go with Elementum. Um, and even the few who prefer JIRA still audit the analytics in Elementum over JIRA. Um, we also really enjoyed the partnership developed with Elementum during the trial. Um, we came to them with needs and they came back to us with solutions. Um, even on the technical side, we sat with our development team a few times, try and brainstorm some workarounds when we had roadblocks or even pushback from outside influencers who were cautious about what information we shared during the pilot. Um, we were also really just drawn to the frequent releases that Elementum deploys. Uh, it seems about monthly, maybe even more than that. Um, and the effort that they make to improve their product on an ongoing basis, uh, especially those changes that, that benefit us. Um, and there are more there, but those are the ones that I wanted to highlight. And then the pilot delivered great results for you and we've moved forward since then with a go live and we're kind of off to the races now. But Courtney, can you tell us what was the go live like at BioFire? Yeah, so go live was a rather an ordinary event, just business as usual. Um, by the time we went live, we had already had 90 days. Um, in training, essentially, we were already using our live data. Um, our API configuration was complete. So the, the pilot was just a, a learning curve for us. And by game day, you know, we were ready, we were conditioned. Yeah, you know, I'm used to enterprise software being trialed and then having to do almost a complete re-implementation for the real thing. And that was not the case here, that the configuration that BioFire defined early on in the trial was the configuration for production as well. And like you said, the live data was already there. The users were already trained up. Did you have user training sessions kind of around that go live period? Um, we had done all of our user training sessions mostly before. I mean, we still actually are training. Uh, we train, um, you know, as, as new things come up, we make sure we communicate that to the team. But most of our trainings, I think we were probably meeting with the team weekly um, just to get feedback. We wanted to know what they thought. We wanted to know what they use on a daily basis because I'm not an end user um, as, as a project manager. It's more of our um, cycle count and our process control teams that use um, Elementum on a daily basis, like actually completing tickets and so I wanted to know from them what is not working what do we need to bring back to um, you know our uh, Elementum success manager who was um, we met I met with him once a, once a week and said this is the list from the team this is what they want to know and he could say well we could either do this or we could try and find a, a way around it um, but we were we were ready to go by by go live so all the training was done prior to that Awesome. And did you guys use um, user guides or some kind of job aids to help things along? Um, I wrote a couple of requirements. Um, these are the fields that we need to complete. And we had some trainings around um, this is the proper way to use the fields because some of them, uh, the way that we design them could be a little bit confusing. So we did have to have some kind of uh, guide. And I think that we've also created some instruction documents since then um, that have been published within the company. So if you had to describe say two or three things that contributed to our kind of mutual success during this trial period and, and, and onward, what would you say are the kind of top three things that people should think about if they're gonna trial really software of any kind? Well, I definitely think there needs to one be more planning at the beginning, right? So um, week one should really establish 
the plan for the trial period. I think we didn't really figure that out until about week three or week four. Um, but I would say that the the key to success um, was support from our approvers and buy-in all around. Um, we, we needed our team to be actively engaged in the trial. Um, we needed that emphasis and reinforcement from the department management team. Um, and we needed our executive management team to hear us out on why we intended to deviate from the company-wide software package. Um, you know, the, the products can be can be great, but there's also the people in politics aspect uh, that need to be acknowledged for a successful transition. Mm -hmm. You know, if we had to say one thing that contributed to our success at BioFire, Courtney, we would probably say your name. Um, <laughs> you are instrumental in gathering user feedback and bringing that to us so that we could have really thoughtful conversations about it. You did not hesitate to jump in and train and retrain users. Um, you acknowledge that user adoption is key. And so you worked with your user community to change their hearts and minds, as well as their hands. Uh, you kept process compliance at the forefront, which is critical because this was live operational data. This is your business. This wasn't you know, just an exercise. This is, this is for real. Um, when I asked your leadership what you brought to the project, he described your ability to envision the end state of a project and then clearly see the path to get there and then really being able to drive toward that strategic end. Uh, he also said that you're able to easily separate the big things from the little things in a project, knowing what to focus on and what to let go. So for all of these reasons, Courtney, we see you as a next level leader. And, and frankly, we have way more fun working with you than we should be allowed. So thank you for that. <laughs> so no, thank you. I'm humble. Thank you. In the way of what's next, um, let me, I was going to ask you, Courtney, what, what's next for BioFire and Elementum, but let me, let me start off by saying this, that sometimes it's easy to know what to do next. Sometimes that's obvious, but it, it can be less obvious to know what comes after what comes next. So to see two hops down the road can sometimes be challenging. And so some of the things that we've talked about together is that we need to come up with a strategy and a roadmap for say the next 12 months to figure out which processes do we want to model in Elementum and what what, which teams, which people are impacted by those processes, what technologies come to play in those processes so that we can then have a map to execute so that we're making ever increasing gains around automation, data accuracy, speed, so that inventory control is going to be well positioned to meet those aggressive revenue targets that you have, growth, growth tar targets that you have. So some of the next three steps are, are to do our Ironman upgrade, which is our, our next uh, our our next big release here and that's currently underway with, with our customers across our customer base, we're going to talk about strategy and roadmap and then we're going to run fast, we're gonna execute. What, what specific next steps are you thinking about that you wanna share with the class? Yeah, so usually when um, you know the trial period ends, that's pretty much the end of, of the project. That's when it segues into just becoming an operation and, and we've project managers kind of fall off from that point, but that's not really what's happened here. Um, we are still planning this as if it's a project. We still have tons of enhancements um, that are coming our way. We are really excited for the Iron Man upgrade because that's our opportunity to model all kinds of processes um, in Elementum. And you guys have been such a pleasure to work with. Um, I've been very humbled. Um, so thank you guys very much for that. Um, and I, I don't want this to end. I really enjoy working with you guys. You and, and Jorge have been a pleasure. Awesome. Thanks for that, Courtney. So now I'd like to just open it for questions and conversation. Um, this, if anybody has questions or conversations, I think you enter it either in the chat or I see a QA section. Ryan, you can help me uh, monitor this if I'm not seeing it. Sure thing, Heather. Just checking now. Yep. Uh, thank you for that, Corey. I see a, a great presentation, Courtney. Thank you. He's asking, how did you prioritize all of the requests from different departments that you work with? Well, the good the good news is that I don't have to. Uh, that's that's <laughs> the that's the uh, job of 
um, all of our, our managers, we have um, three managers within, uh, not, not including me, um, but we have, we have actually what's called th functional areas, we call them. Um, so we have our process control, that's all of the requests that we get from outside of uh, inventory control. These come from our supply chain um, departments, so from our materials teams, from our production teams, from our quality teams, anything that needs inventory controls, um, work or assistance, uh, that all goes through process control. And um, Chase, who is our, our manager there, he's the one who prioritizes all of that. Thankfully, we do have quite a number of uh, process control members who are able to um, get those done. But but our, our internal like in department rule is that everything has to be addressed within the day. Um, the other areas that we have are our cycle count team. Um, and then we also have what we call the AIF team. Um, AIF is just a it's the application inter interface framework within SAP. Um, I, I like to call it purgatory. That's just where anytime we send a transaction through and we don't have the, the correct quantity or whatever, like it's not in the correct state, quality state, um, it'll get stopped up in the AF. And then we have a team that addresses all of those errors and they um, get to determine with, it, with their managers what's, what's prioritized. Awesome. All right. Well, then I think that concludes our webinar today. For those of you curious, the uh, locations were taken from Star Wars and the products on the left were the, the parts and pieces required to make a lightsaber. And the part the products on the right were uh, starfighters, Jedi starfighters, different uh, model versions of those. <laughs> yes. Courtney, thanks again. BioFire, thank you for your partnership. And to all of you out there, let us know how we can help you in your supply chain strategies. Take care. Right on. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.